having this great swing at Walmart all the time. I'm glad that you came and had fun. And for those of you who have not been at Walmart, I guess my goal is today is to try to get at least one of you to come try our park, right? Um, I should also congratulate everyone for being a member of this fun group. I mean, really, what, what a fun group. The things you just talked about, it's all fun. And that's, yeah, it's great. So if Kathy has my PowerPoint, then I will show you a few slides. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna recap 2019 summer for Wallamere a little bit, and I don't have any pictures of that, so I'll just start back with it. Okay. So we had a really rotten beginning of the season because of the weather, which is horrible. And it was, I've been there 25 years. Well, let me back up. I'm, I've been there 25 years, I'm president. My father-in-law is the <coughs> owner. My wife and I work there. His wife works there. Okay. And family is there. My son, our son works there. Our other two children are not. They, don't, they didn't want anything to do with it. You know, we made our kids work there when they started, when they were legally aged, and walked all through college, and then two of them like, bye-bye. Just like my wife's two sisters, they were like, uh-huh. Um, so we're happy if one of us, one of our children works for us. But, so we had a really bad, all the 25 years I worked there, was, I was really concerned because it was really, it was really bad. Um, but all of a sudden, the mother nature flipped the switch, and the rest of the summer was fantastic. So our attendance overall was a little bit lower than, than the year before, but because we raised prices and you know, you know, so we're about flat business wise. I like to share business with you. I mean, I'm not afraid to tell you things. I mean, we're not corporate, we're family owned. I can tell you anything. <laughs> so we also had a challenge that we haven't experienced before this summer, and that was staffing. You know, I read about other parks. Now I'll name Kennywood. Kennywood, I see that because I get their news a lot because we're in the same state. How they have a lot of staffing issues. We we have typically been able to staff our park also this summer, but we always struggle at the end when college students start going back to school. But this year, it, from day one, we were lacking ride operators and lacking, and I did, and so I attribute that to the low unemployment. So we didn't have as many adults working for us, and uh, but. The younger generation and the college age and the high school age, I don't, don't want to work the hours. I, I heard so many employees say, I don't want to work 40 hours a week. You know, and We used to have very hungry employees who wanted to work as many hours as we could get. You know? But also, we upped our wages a little bit, but now this year we're going to up them a lot more for the summer out because we just we got to get ahead. Our minimum wage in our state is 725 still. It's not like you know a lot of other states have gone away. So we, we are staying. Way ahead of that, we paid you know, like nine. This year, probably going to ten. But we're we're competitive in our market. But we just need to go higher, you know. Um, so that was a new experience. We had to close rides throughout the summer because we didn't we couldn't stop them. That was painful for me to see. I don't like to do that. We would pick the rides that were we know as the least popular rides to do that to, or the most challenging to operate. Um, uh, can you show my slides? There's a little tickler screen to remember what to say. Thank you. The first slide just remember, reminds me to say, oh, you, can you get to that? Yeah, yeah, can you do it? I'm a clicker. Yeah. Kathy clicker. Yep. Okay, so, okay, so I said all that, okay. All right. So we introduced last summer uh, our first ride that goes upside down. We love it. A dance ride that we call chaos. And aptly named because we had some trouble with it. The um, control system had a, had a problem which we couldn't understand for a long time. And we had a rep from Nazem Perlip, the manufacturer, Soriani, there who didn't speak very good English. We had actually three different guys who come at different times. And I have an app on my phone now to do translation to Italian to English, you know. And, uh, but. No, no offense to them, but they, they had, there was like a ghost technical problem that they just couldn't find for a long, long time. And they finally figured it out in the middle of the summer. But we had one instance where it got stuck upside down for two minutes. Exactly two minutes, because I watched the video. Because I heard people, were, there was, you know, news media saying, oh, it was 20 minutes. It was two minutes. And it came down normally, and everyone got off, and we, you know, we asked them if they were okay, and everyone seemed okay. but. I had never experienced the kind of media attention that brought up. <laughs> I probably did 15 interviews over the next two days to the local media TV station and radio stations to, to try to say what happened and what we're doing about it. And 
it was not very fun. Not very fun. But so we ran up, we ran it just partially so we could keep it open, just not upside down for like the next week until they figured out what was wrong and tried to and go and we ran it full cycle for the rest of the summer. But we're still like, is it really fixed? Because we're just so because it, it was such an irritating problem, you know. But all in all, it was a very popular ride. People who did ride it really liked it. But I did hear people like later in the summer saying, I'm not going out there, you don't got stuck, you know? So yeah. So but yeah. you can brag about that for months. Yeah, yeah. But I, I read about other other locations in the in the our industry where a ride a roller coaster gets stuck upside down and people are upside down for twenty minutes or half. And I always think, man, that must really suck, you know, <laughs> for the operator. But two minutes was the other side. So for what I experienced, I can't imagine what they experienced after that. They have something worse. This group would want something like that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Evacuation, something unique, right? Yes. Okay, Kathy, please go to the next slide. So, we also introduced in our water park a giant heated relaxing pool or a hot tub. And uh, you, so, you can go to good. So, we have a, our water park has, we added land in our park about six years ago so we could grow the water park. And each year, we in the last five years, we've added something new to the water park. This year was a big hot tub because our old hot tub was small, only could hold 40 people. This holds 120, 130. And uh, it was it was it was well received, very popular. We also made a lot of not not lots. We told the media, we told people that what we decided to do is every year we're going to do something big in the water park or the amusement park and just flip flop every year something small like and. We actually decided after like nine months later. No, maybe not. Maybe they were putting too much emphasis on the water park. So I'll tell you about what we're doing this, this coming season. In the next slide, please. Okay. So over in the fall, after we close, we close Labor Day. We're not one of the parks that continue to operate in the fall, which a lot of people have hounded me about that. I keep going. Uh, but we had, we did a lot of work every year. We do a lot of work on the our big wooden coaster because there's a lot of wood, and we have to do that, and a lot, of, you know, a lot of wood deteriorates. So I just scribbled in red the areas where we completely removed the wood and completely replaced the track, which was the, the biggest the biggest work that we've done since this ride opened 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, so the very, you know, the second drop and the, the turn, right before the 90 degree turn by the motor house, we did extensive work. And actually, a, a coaster enthusiast told me Labor Day weekend, that he said, you know, there's a really bad spot right there. I feel like you're going over a pothole. Because <laughs> I, you know, I ride a lot, and I feel like I know the coaster pretty well. And I said, so let me go ride with you. So we rode it like, you're right. <laughs> so we went down the next day. We found out what was wrong. But, you know, it wasn't bad enough to, to stop operation. But that was the first thing I told the repair crew to do as soon as we closed. I said, we got to fix that pothole. <laughs> and, uh, so we finished in. Early November, and we wrote. I wasn't there that weekend, but they got to ride it, and everyone feels it's a lot smoother than than what it was. So next year we'll probably do a lot, the, the same amount of wood replacement, just in, the, in other areas, and try to do more than we usually do to keep it keep it up up to speed. We didn't have to do very much on the top. Okay, please. I just have a couple pictures that one of our guys took to show the. Just the pictures are fun to look at. So all the track is moved by the motor house, and then if you could show two more, I think there's more for them. Yeah, on the first drop, there was some. No, that's right, that's the second drop across the street, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's after they started putting the track back together. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this coming season, we are in the water park, like we had announced we were doing something big in the water park. I made this little model to help show it. You can look at it if you like. But uh, I used uh, the glass and straps that we buck sell in the water park to make that. But it's going. It's a mat race. A mat racer had first mat racer slide. Six lanes. It's uh, going to cost about three million dollars. It's it's pretty big, and it's going to be. I think it's going to be a really good addition to our water park. We are removing our two oldest uh, speed slides, which are not popular at all, and. Uh, it's going to be a big hit. Our, that's not our, you know, that's graphic depiction, that's pro slide page. We don't have um, 
palm trees or add on to the background, but it's going to be, it's right along the main road it comes to our, it goes by our park to the state park, and so it's going to be a really big advertising, you know, people are going to say, whoa, they got a water park there, it's big and colorful, um, I'm excited about it. We started work on it right away in September, and the crew just left for the, it's an out-of-town out crew, and they just left for probably three months because it's too cold now to put up the fiberglass. So they have everything ready to start putting the fiberglass up. So that's what we're doing for the water park. And if you go to the next slide, please. Ooh, we're adding a, our fifth roller coaster, which, which we call the Whirlwind. <laughs> My father-in-law bought this without me knowing about it, pretty much. So I can't say I participated in selecting it. I'm not saying any more than that, but it's a, it's a family spinning coaster, so the cars do spin. Um, it's from SBF Visa, which is a company from Italy, which we've never bought from before, but they are very big. They, they, they put rides all around the park. I, we took down our Showtime Theater, which is where we had like a little small singing and dancing show, and um, Water Wars game as well. So it's right in front of our log, our log booms on the river. And the Alibaba rides over here, our food stands over here. We got that up in four days in early November. But now, as you can see, we're trying to build access to it because the ride in, Italy, in, in Europe, they don't really care about people with wheelchairs or ADA requirements. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it was horrible the way they had you get to the ride. And you had to go up a steep ramp and the, it just was wrong. And so we are spending almost as much as the ride cost to make it more friendly to get to it, you know? Because you got to. I was, I was, there's no way I'm going to say more. Um, I think it'll be a good addition to our small family oriented, you know, the kids who come to our park that come with their families. Because you can ride it at 30, it's like our flume ride where you can ride it at 36 to 48 with someone, 48 alone. And so, that's almost four years old. You can ride that ride. So that'd be good. I, I rode it. I, I rode it at IAPA a couple years ago, so I know it, you know it's not real thrilling. So if the, I think the drop is eight feet. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's been and someone here actually rode it. Someone run red in Detroit. There was one, there's one like this. And, and he says there's really some good air time for like a split second. <laughs> but, oh, in Italy, right? Okay, so there's one in scene 75 in Columbus that they just opened a couple of months ago that we went to look at right when they were getting ready to open it. So I learned that I kept seeing on the, all the boxes that came with it, you know, all the packages that came with the drive, all, all the containers, it, said, it had like 394. Every box, almost every 394, I thought, oh, it's just like a shipping number or something. But finally, when the installer came, I said, what's this 394 mean? And he said, oh, that's the 394th coaster we made. I said, no way. So they've made, now they have three models, some are a little bit bigger, but he said, don't worry, you, if we've worked out the bugs, I mean, it's 394. So our water slide we're building is like the second one that they're doing like that, you know. So this is, I think it's going to be okay as far as I won't. I hopefully won't have the control problems. We have them in chaos. Come with installation instructions, like in a book where you come with the tools and everything. Yes. So it's going to be like a book. English, on, English on one side, and Italian on the other, and poorly translated. Yeah. Um, I still have not gotten this approved by our state. So, and also the, the, the slide, but our state is, there's a board of people who review rides that are new coming to our state and I happen to be on the board, so I'm confident. <laughs> confident that it will be accepted and we can operate in a minute. That's the entire, yeah, that's the entire ride, yeah. It's a figure eight. We can choose how many times we go around, we'll probably just, Five times maybe? I don't know. Five times the ride is two minutes. Okay, so, yeah. 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 Okay. We shoehorned it in. It should be good. I think it'll be good. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Also, in this coming summer, Wackershack, our dark ride, is 50 years old. It's amazing. We haven't really made our plans on how we're going to celebrate it, but we will have some small celebrations about that. I have another son who's not working for us that is a creative writer and in his side, his side career, and he has written two mystery books for children. And he's finally getting the third one out because he, when he first made his his first one, he said he could make a trilogy. And he wrote two right away, and then the next one was like, I kept, he kept saying, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" And so he's finally, we're finally pushing him and giving some money to help pay the publisher to get him going. So, um, but it should be out. I hope this summer. But uh, anyway, that's fun. That's fun for me. To, I'm proud of his. his he's, it's really good. They're good. They're probably for fifth, sixth, seventh grade age. Um, it's, it's it's a mystery story based at Walgers at well at the park you know so it's, so if you know the park it's fun to read it because you, you know everything okay next slide I think I only have like oh my gosh <laughs> okay so at our park you know we're pretty I mean most of these parks are we're not we're not um, metro you know we're not a city we're a little bit suburban so a lot of woods Walter means woods by the sea right so we have a lot of the trees and I, over my 25 years I've seen Sometimes we have a lot of raccoons, then they'll phase out. Maybe now we maybe we'll have a lot of um, groundhogs, and this year we've got a lot of skunks. So we I just see some interesting stories about skunks. So it would not be uncommon for me to leave the office at night, 10, 10 30 night, to leave one of the last people to leave, and I walk out of the office and I go across the midway and I'll see five skunks in my path eating like. French waffles, sugar, you know, <laughs> you know just, and they, they, they just kind of look up at me, you know, and then keep in, I eat, and I'm like, hi, Peppy, hi, Peppy, you know, or, or, you know, just trying to be calm, you know, and, uh, but they cause some problems, you know, usually I don't care, but our catering manager, who's been there for many, many years, in July 3rd, it was July 3rd, I know, it was July 3rd, Holly weekend, right, so she... Was, I was closing the park at like 10.30, all of a sudden she called her radio, I fell down and I can't get up! I'm like, okay, she's, she's not real agile, so I thought, okay, yeah. I called her night watch and said, go check on her, please, he's also an EMT, so I said, go check on her, and I'll be there as soon as I can. Well, I got there and she was really in bad shape, so she fell down off the stairs because she got scared by a skunk. She was closing the door and the skunk, she freaked out and she fell, and she landed on her hip and she broke her hip. She's still out of work. After July to now, right? So that made catering really, really hard for this summer because she knew everything. Then, and then another story was in late August. Um, all of a sudden, there were people in the gift shop, you know, like freaking out on the radio. There's a skunk in our shop, or a skunk in our shop. And I was like, oh my gosh, I you know, go down there, just hit everybody, just leave them alone, and shoot it out, you know. But then, probably the next day, our maintenance electrician who I didn't know was doing this all summer, but he, he's probably 45 years old. He would encounter skunks in the morning, early morning, because he comes to work at like 6 a.m. He would see a skunk like hold up underneath the ride where he does his inspection underneath the teacup ride or the, or the Wendy teacup. And he, they, would, they would find a little space for the day to go sleep. And, but he needs to go down there to inspect the ride. And he would encounter the skunk and he would talk to them gently and pet them. Okay. I never knew he was doing this. So, and then he would go, he went to the rack shack early morning, and he would, they would somehow get underneath the wood, and they'd go in the control room, he goes and open the ride up, and there's a skunk in there, so he just, he told me he would get down on his hands, he'd just talk to it, and pet it, and help it go out the door. I never knew he was doing this, right? So, all of a sudden, he, he texts me at like 10.30 in the morning Saturday, and says, I'm leaving, I have to go to the hospital, I just got bit by a skunk. <laughs> and I'm like, oh great. So you know, I learned out later, I learned later that he was he went down to help that little skunk out of this pit under the ride. And he was about to help it out, like pick it up and pick it up. And he slipped and the skunk got scared. So he threw it up on the concrete above him, you know, and it turned around and sprayed him and bit him. <laughs> so I would call him the skunk whisperer, right? But he had to get 19 rabies shots. He drove, he, luckily he drove his motorcycle the other day, so he went not to smell up his truck. But he goes to the first emergency care and they said, oh, we don't have rabies shots stuff here. Oh, go to the next one. They went, they didn't have any. 
you gotta go to the hospital. So he was like traveling around town, and he, can you imagine going to the hospital and say, um, I got bit by a skunk, you know? And like, who gets bit by a skunk? People run away from skunks. Anyway, I had, I had to share that with you, but I thought it was pretty funny. Did you, you say something there, so? No, no, that skunk ran away. I mean, I mean, he said the skunk was fine. He was fine. He was fine. Um, I don't, I think that might be my last slide. I don't have a lot of slide shows. Our season costs are on sale, and if you want to come just for the day, on our website you can use, and you can always ask us, you know, it's not like a secret code, but you can use a, a, a special promo code to get a, a good discount if you want to just come for the day. Um, so if there are any comments or questions, I would be glad to take them. Yes.